What is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo here today, back with more NFL predictions. This time, it is week number six in the NFL, and it kicks off tomorrow, Thursday, October 11th, 2018, at 8.20 p.m. on Fox NFL Network and Amazon Prime Video. It's the Philadelphia Eagles visiting the New York Giants. So, I'm a Giants fan. We scored 30 points for the first time since January of 2016. And to me, that is a very impressive feat. However, you know, I I don't want to sit here and break this down all day because I know I could because I know these two teams like the back of my hand. But I don't really trust the Giants in this game. And I think the Eagles are just going to pull one out because they always seem to do uh, they always seem to do that against the Giants, so I gotta take the Eagles in this game. You know, I, I really wish I could pick the Giants and trust them to win, but I can't. Cause how do you? Well, I mean, let's just backtrack a minute. They won the game against the Carolina Panthers. I don't care what anybody says. The NFL has already admitted there was a bogus call, and you can clearly see by watching the game tape, Cam Newton spiked the ball on fourth and one after Christian McCaffrey came up clearly short of the first down line late in the game when uh, they set up that 63-yard field goal for the win. But Cam Newton spiked the ball on fourth and one right there. It should have been Giants ball. But, hey, I mean, the uh, the referees want to screw over the Giants. That's fine. I guess it's just not our year for the, for the referees and for the league to give the Giants a winning season. It's such bulk. Crap, it really is. The way that this league is dictated by people who have no idea what the hell they're doing out there on the field. The referees in today's game are absolutely stupid. Jerome Boger was the referee for our game, I'm, I'm fairly sure. And he's a goddamn idiot. How do you not see that A, Christian McCaffrey didn't make the first down line, B, you don't review it, C, you don't bring the chains out to measure... And D, you don't get the call right on the field on 4th and 1. Ridiculous. It's absolutely embarrassing to be a professional football fan in 2018 with these bogus calls and the way that they're screwing the players over. And they, just like Mike Tomlin said, are costing people their jobs and are costing people their livelihood. But no, that doesn't matter to the NFL. And then they find Mike Tomlin for saying the correct thing. If you don't, if you can't handle the criticism, then get the goddamn rules right the first time. The Giants should be two and three right now because they beat the Carolina Panthers. Simple as that. But no, just because of some referees with an niche for a quick buck happen to, I I'm gonna say this. I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all, but those refs were bought. On Sunday, they were bought off by whoever the hell the new owner of the Carolina Panthers is, because there is no way under this this sun that shines every single day under our great earth, there is no way those referees. There is a team of referees. The whole point of a team of referees is to get the calls right the first time on the field. No reviews, none of that nonsense. Yet they cost a game to a team. They literally, twice on the same drive, cost a team a victory. And the NFL is just going to sit back and do nothing. It's pathetic. It really is. I've, watched, I've seen better football out of the Canadian Football League, out of the Arena Football League, and out of the American Flag Football League, all in the same year as this NFL season. It is absolutely pathetic. The NFL has got to get its crap together. There's a reason ratings decline, and it's not because players take the knee for the national anthem for a cause that is a very good cause that people overshadow because they're just ridiculously caught up in their own agenda. It's because of crap like this. The referees dictating games and costing teams victories. The New York Giants are 2-3. and three. They really are. If you watch the game, you know. They won. But because of the referees being absolutely incompetent at the job, they get paid thousands and maybe millions of dollars to, to officiate. No, they just decide to screw a team over. 
rant over on that one. But, uh, yeah, i got to take the Eagles in this game. Next up on Sunday, October 14th, 1 p.m. on Fox, it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons. Both these teams are bad. <laughs> Let's just throw that out there. But I think the Falcons' offense is good enough to uh, carry the weight of their sluggish defense against a Jameis Winston-led group of Tampa Bay Suckineers. So I'm going to take the Atlanta Falcons here on Sunday afternoon. Next up, it's 1 p.m. on Fox. It's the Carolina Cheaters at the Washington Deadskins. The Redskins got smoked on Monday night. The Panthers lost uh, clearly and in, in very, very obviously on Sunday afternoon. So uh, I'm, I'm going to take the Redskins in this game. I think that uh, Monday was an anomaly. They faced really a, they were in a situation that no team would ask to be in being the team that had to get sacrificed to Drew Brees and his record um, but yeah I'm going to take the Redskins in this game I think their offense will figure it out against the Panthers defense that uh, doesn't look good especially against one of the lowest scoring teams in all of football last week in a game that they lost let me remind you so I'm going to take the Redskins next up it is 1pm on Fox the Seattle Seahawks at the Oakland Raiders from London, England, bloody hell. I'm going to take a, uh, oh God, this is a tough game because the Seahawks have been kind of, you know, picking themselves back up out of the, out of the dirt in the Raiders. They just seem to not know how to play professional football, even with a $100 million head coach. But uh, I believe both teams just got a win last week, but I, I do like the Seahawks more. Their defense, I think, is an underrated group, and I do still believe in Danger Russell Wilson, so I'm going to take the Seahawks in this game. Uh, poor Raiders, they're going to be in a very lowly, lowly state after after this game. If the prediction goes the way I think, they'll be 1-5, and, and that's just ridiculous. So next up, it's the Colts and the Jets on CBS, and uh, I'm going to take the Jets in this game. Their offense is lethal. It really is big play offense. And the Colts, they're just bad all the way around. They're literally getting walked all over by people that have no business walking all over them, i.e. the Patriots. The Colts should have, I think, at least battled in that game, but they look anemic, pathetic. Uh, they look too shallow at, at every position, including quarterback, which they need to get a new one in fast because Andrew Luck is a freaking joke. But I'm going to take the Jets in this game because the Colts, like I say about Andrew Luck, are a goddamn joke. Next up, 1 p.m. Fox, Arizona Cardinals at Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I'm going to take the Vikings in this game. I think that they'll kind of figure out their woes a little bit. You know, and not really their woes. They got caught in a trap game against the Bills, and the Rams are the best team in football. And last week they got a pretty sound win over the defending Super Bowl champions. So, yeah, I'm going to take the Vikings in this game over a rookie quarterback with an average defense. So, yeah, I like the Vikings in this game. Sorry to say, Cardinals fans, but uh, you just don't look too hot this year. You missed your window. You really did. Next up on CBS, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Cincinnati Bengals. So the Steelers offense uh, kind of found its, itself last week against, in my opinion, the very worst defense in football, the Atlanta Falcons. And that's nothing to do with their, their talent because they're talented on the Falcons' defense. They're just injured, and you don't like to make excuses like that. But they're very banged up, and um, the, the Steelers just capitalized on that. But I, I really like the Bengals. I think their defense is quite underrated, and I think their offense is just very good. They can score on you from, from pretty much anywhere on the field. And I like the Bengals a lot, and I think the Steelers' defense is quite average to subpar even so I'll take the Bengals in this game and I think it'll be a close one I, I love this rivalry I love Steelers Bengals and I hope somebody gets their head taken clean off and it gets flagged obviously because what else would happen but I'm gonna take the Bengals in this game next up 1 p.m. on CBS it's the Los Angeles Chargers at the Cleveland Browns I'm gonna take the Browns in this game why because they're great I said it don't like it fight me uh, but really, the Chargers are a pretty good team, too. And the Browns, I think, uh, they're just well-rounded. They're just not very... They just don't have the chemistry yet to be a great team in the league. But I feel like with a few more years and uh, a little bit more experience under Baker Mayfield's belt, 
they'll be really good. And I mean, they could be undefeated right now. Let's be perfectly honest. They could be undefeated, or at the very least, four and one. And that, or, or five and one. Sorry. And that is, that's pretty impressive for a team that last year didn't win a game. So I'm going to take the Browns in this game. I think that they'll get to three wins on the year, and that'll be momentous if you're a Browns fan. Next up on CBS, it's the Buffalo Bills at the Houston Texans, and I really like the Texans' offense. They they are hugely explosive. No matter who you, you get the ball to, Will Fuller, Lamar Miller, Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Kiki QT, they're just a very good offense. I mean, their line is not the best, but I feel like their uh, their playmakers are just good enough to make up for the ineptitudes along the offensive line. And their defense is a very, very talented, very, very good unit. And I think that they're they're really underrated because of the uh, the the secondary play that the Texans, you know, kind of they fall off. When you look at the team, they go, okay, you got pretty good linebackers, you got a great defensive front, and then you got an eh secondary. But I think the secondary is good enough to keep them in football games, and especially against the Bills. I think that the Texans will have a really good chance to win, and I'm going to take them in this game. So next up, it is on Fox, the Bears and the Dolphins. i got to take the Bears. They just, uh, they, they're lights out, both sides of the ball. And I think that, uh, <clears throat> I believe they had a bye week last week. And coming off that, they'll be a well-rested team, a very good team against a team that was 3-0, and largely because they played a bunch of nobodies in the first three weeks of the season and then got completely embarrassed by, uh, by two different teams. So I'm going to take the Bears in this game, and I like them a lot. I feel like they're going to win by multiple scores. Next up, 4.05 p.m. on Fox, the Hollywood Rams at the Denver Broncos. So the Broncos are a shade of their former selves, getting beat badly by the New York Jets last week. And the Rams, they're the Hollywood Rams. Come on. They're big time. Their offense is big time, even without Cooper Cup and Brandon Cooks, potentially. Their offense is big time big time and that's like better than regular big time it's like double big time and their defense even though they're a little bit banged up i feel like they're a pretty pretty good unit and they'll they'll help carry the hollywood rams to a victory over the lowly colorado broncos <laughs> next up 4:25 p.m on cbs it is the baltimore ravens visiting the tennessee Titans and I, I I really like both of these teams here in this game. I mean I don't like the Ravens, but I mean I like both units. I should say, and it's going to be a tough game. But I do like the Titans in in a low scoring kind of a slug fest. Uh, the Ravens defense is as usual pretty good, but their offense I feel like Joe Flacco is still not the best quarterback of all time. <laughs> Clearly. And I feel like he will kind of, you know, come back down from that excellent performance he had against the Steelers. And I don't know what the hell the Ravens did last week, but uh, I do like the Titans in this game. And I'm going to pick them against the Ravens. Next, 425 p.m. at CBS. It is the Jaguars at the Cowboys. I'm going to take the Jaguars in this game because I really like their defense. And I know their offense is completely <gasps> anemic <gasps> without <gasps> Leonard <gasps> Fournette. <gasps> And that's how they feel when they play. When you watch them on offense, that's how they feel. I feel like they're sucking wind straight from the get-go. They never find their footing, and Blake Bortles is a joke. But maybe with Jamal Charles, they'll be a better unit. But the Cowboys are trash. They're garbage. They had many opportunities to put the Texans away and put them away in a route. They, they 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 just did it. It was really kind of sad the way that the Cowboys were so inept at putting the Houston Texans away, and then they lose. <laughs> I mean, come on. And then especially that fourth down call in overtime, you, you, that was just dumb. It was stupid. But and I yeah, they they punted when they should have gone for it or attempted the long field goal. I mean, what's the worst that can happen if you attempt the field goal? And what's the worst that can happen if you go for it? Either way, you're probably going to end up losing the game, which 
They did anyway, but hey. Yeah, I think the Cowboys are trash. The Jaguars' defense is... The Jaguars' defense is better than the Jaguars' offense and the Cowboys' defense and offense combined. So I'm going to take the Jaguars in this game for that lone fact. Next, Sunday Night Football on NBC. It's the Kansas City Chiefs at the New England Patriots. Now, this game is quite interesting because the Patriots, of course, are the Patriots. They're Tom Brady. They're Julian Edelman. They're Rob Gronkowski. They're Bill Belichick. They're perennial Super Bowl contenders every single year. But the Kansas City Chiefs are showtime with Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, uh, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, the whole lot. Oh, how can I forget Kareem Hunt in that mix? But they're a really good offense. They really are. And their defense proved themselves last week against um, Joke Bortles there in, in Jacksonville. And they actually beat the Jaguars. Surprise, surprise. M- m- scoring a, a pretty pretty high number on that Jags defense, 30 points. And that's impressive to me. And I like the Chiefs in this game. And I feel like Andy Reid's sort of... Uh, He's got this momentum over Bill Belichick at the moment. Obviously, the Super Bowl loss eh, doesn't count in my scenario here. But last year, opening night, Chiefs beat the Patriots. Here again on uh, in, in a primetime game, I like the Chiefs over the Patriots. So I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs. Monday Night Football, October 15th on ESPN. Are you ready for some football? I know two teams that aren't. The 49ers... At the Green Bay Packers. Uh, the Niners without Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, who knows what they are? C.J. Beathard, of course, knows the offense, so he's a, a good backup to have. But when you look up and down that roster, they're just not the most talented. They're not the best. I mean, I felt like with Garoppolo in, they had a great, a, a greater chance to win and, and potentially claw towards a wild card seed in the NFC, but without him and the injuries at running back, I just cannot firmly stand behind the 49ers and say they're going to be a good team. Maybe next year will be their coming out party, but this year they're going to be sub-500 and they're going to miss the playoffs entirely. But the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, you can never count them out. Sure, they played a bad game last week against the, against the Lions, but you know, it's it's an every week kind of thing. The Lions, they well, every team in every division builds their team to beat their division opponents. Because if you can do that, you come away with what two, four, six wins, and then all you got to do is split your road games and split your home games, and you're in the playoffs. And that's just mind-boggling to me how that works. And um, and the Packers, they lost. They did, and I'm gonna admit it. They got punched in the mouth. And they're a little banged up, and that's no excuse, of course. But Aaron Rodgers, uh, hopefully he, he's feeling better because he should really capitalize on this Niners team and have a, a certainly decent day against the, the San Francisco 49ers. But uh, the Packers' defense, I feel like they're kind of all over the place. Of course, you got Clay Matthews, haha, Clinton Dix, um, no Muhammad Wilkerson. But uh, I, you know, I cannot ever root against Aaron Rodgers in a game like this. So I'm going to take Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to take the Green Bay Packers. They're my pick on Monday night. But ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's Thursday to Monday, week six in the NFL. And I hope that you guys get engaged. Leave a comment down below, drop a like, hit that subscribe button, share the channel. Do all that nonsense. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Excuse me, that's going to do it for me, you boy hobo. Excuse me again. Excuse me, third time. Excuse me, fourth time. And I will catch you guys next week for week seven predictions.